Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you all with us once again. One of the largest biotech agribusiness chemical companies on the planet is Monsanto, the makers of Roundup. Now that it merged with Bayer, that is, especially. They were back in the news again because a federal jury ruled that the weed killer Roundup was a substantial factor in causing the cancer of defendant Mr. Dwayne Hardiman. While Trump's EPA said Roundup is probably not carcinogenic to people, the World Health Organization and independent researchers have found Roundup's main ingredient, glyphosate, is most likely a carcinogen. Thousands more cases are being filed. What will this mean? And what will this portend for Monsanto and the future of their products, the battles with uh, agribusinesses, and for the rest of us? Well, we're joined today by Samara Geller who is Senior Researcher and Database Analyst with the Environmental Working Group. And Samara, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. So I want to start with this um, short video of the lawyer who won the case. This took place last month in February when he was commenting on the case and his deposition he took with the folks from Monsanto. Let's listen to what he had to say. When I took Monsanto's deposition, I took their corporate representative deposition, he said to me that there's no evidence across the board that there's any association with cancer. That's just nonsense. There is a mountain of evidence. And this company needs to get straight and be honest with its, with its customers and say, listen, there is evidence that it's associated with cancer and get, let people make a choice about whether or not they use the product. This case is about failure to warn. And the simple fact is they haven't worn, and they're going to keep being sued until they do. So, uh, I misspoke. It was, the, it was Edwin Hardiman who, who, who the case was just, um, it was just decided. But, but I'm, I'm curious your perspective on this. You, ha you have what he was saying here in this, as he was taking the deposition before the verdict took place. And clearly our EPA in the United States has been saying that there's probably real no connection. There's probably real connection between that product, Roundup, and their products and cancer. The World Health Organization, some independent researchers, uh, have found just the opposite, that there probably is. Um, and nobody really spoken definitively, as I've read or seen so far. But so talk about this debate going on and what that really means. So there is mounting evidence showing a link between glyphosate and cancer, specifically non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So in 2015, the uh, International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC, which is part of the World Health Organization, they classified glyphosate as a probable human carcinogen. Also in 2017, the state of California included glyphosate on its Proposition 65 registry. So this Proposition 65 registry is a list of chemicals that the state of California publishes every year. Uh, that list contains carcinogens, also reproductive and developmental toxicants. Um, and so we have the World Health Organization, which is fiercely defending its position on glyphosate as being a probable human carcinogen. We have the state of California, which is also aligned with the World Health Organization. But we also have emerging evidence coming out of the University of Washington, so these researchers recently did a meta-analysis. So they actually pooled data from uh, studies that were published between 2001 and 2018. Um, and so this particular subset of studies actually found a 41% increased risk in non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the highest exposed group. So that's pretty, pretty damning evidence uh, right there. So that's a very compelling link between glyphosate and the devel development of cancer, specifically non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, but we also know that the judge uh, in this case uh, recently in San Francisco unsealed internal documents from Monsanto that showed that the company worked behind the scenes with the EPA to promote the claim that glyphosate was safe and to point the finger away mm -hmm. from the evidence showing to the contrary. And now there's a second phase of this trial, as I understand, is that correct? Right, so we're actually in that second phase right now. So the jury will have an opportunity to review this evidence, um, this batch of unsealed documents from Monsanto. Um, also, Monsanto publicly worked to discredit the valid work of researchers um, and the valid conclusions of scientists uh, revealing the harms of this chemical. So I want to play another clip here for all of you um, and for our guest. This is a gentleman who actually took the case, that won the first case last year, uh, le leading up to this year's case. And this is what he had to say. I found it really interesting and compelling, and I want to see where we think this might take this entire struggle. Why was the label important? The label is important because 
as a pest controller and as those guys out there in professional doing this, in the professional field of applying herbicides, it's a requirement to understand your label and to look at your label. It's very serious. There's a whole chapter on reading the label, how to read it, and what to look for. So if that was on the label, people can make an informed choice. What did that verdict mean to you? The verdict really meant to me um, that this thing was not done in vain. And I remember standing there saying to myself, if I lose this case, this company is going to be able to get away, and then they'll be able to say, see, I told you our stuff didn't do that. So, Summer, since there are like 11,200 cases, we talked about that, are not going to be brought against Monsanto, and that we, we've heard these are not precedent-centered, these last two cases were not precedent-setting uh, in regard to these other cases coming, but they clearly are going to have an effect. So, I'm cu And this is, you know, a huge company, and we're talking about settlements that are tens of millions of, and hundreds of millions of dollars that could be, uh, and more maybe, that could be set against Monsanto and Bayer. So, w what's the significance of all of this in terms of what the, the entire things have gone before this when it comes to dealing with Monsanto and Roundup? Well, it certainly puts Roundup in the spotlight. It certainly gets um, consumers, uh, regulators, uh, policymakers thinking differently about the way we regulate pesticides and the way we regulate um, tolerances of pesticide residues in foods. Um, so this is all having an impact on a lot of different platforms. Um, so EWG actually commissioned tests of popular oat-based products, um, a lot of them marketed to children. Um, and so our, in our tests of oat-based products, uh, we detected uh, glyphosate in nearly all of the samples. So 95% of the samples we tested for glyphosate uh, were positive. Um, and so we're actually pushing consumers to do a number of things. First of all, eat organically if possible. So purchase organic food when you have the means and the opportunity to do so and the choice to purchase organic. That will help reduce your exposure to glyphosate. Um, but what's really important to note about the way that the EPA regulates pesticides is that they often set the tolerances uh, far too high to be adequately protective of children's health. We know children mm -hmm. are heavily impacted uh, by pesticides. We know that there are children eating oat-based products that are growing, their bodies are developing, um, and they're more susceptible to um, harms, including cancer. Now, I've covered those things in the past, and that, I mean, that's very real, and I think most people don't know about that, and then people need to know about that. And, and finally, I'm just curious, this, these, this, these cases, that, that uh, we'll see what happens in the second part of this case, but I'm wondering what, how, what effect you think this has on the work of your organization, other organizations in the political struggles with Monsanto, as well as the legislative battles in this country and Europe. What do you think, what, what, do you, what do you think, what effect do you think this will have on all that? Well, we're urging the EPA uh, to actually reevaluate uh, the evidence of uh, harms from glyphosate. We're urging them to prohibit this use of glyphosate as a pre-harvest desiccant. And so we're, we're assuming this trial will definitely elevate these issues um, for those EPA regulators. Um, we're also looking to the FDA to really step up their game. They've been really woefully inadequate at releasing information um, that would help us to fully understand the scope of the problem. So right now, um, FDA recently released data on the detection of glyphosate in corn and soy, but they've really withheld data on some other food crops. We know it's in wheat. We know it's in barley. We know it's in beans. Um, so we want the, we're pressuring the FDA to release uh, data that would help shed light on the full scope of where it's located in our food supply. Um, we're actually looking towards some recently introduced legislation by uh, Representative um, DeLauro. Uh, she's a representative from Connecticut, mm -hmm. and she's uh, promoting the idea that we should prohibit use of glyphosate as a pre-harvest desiccant on oats. Uh, the bill's also calling to reduce the permissible uh, residue level of glyphosate by 300-fold. So mm -hmm. it's right from 30 uh, parts per million down to 0 0.1 parts per million. So that's pretty significant. Um, right, so this bill would dramatically um, 
lower people's exposure to glyphosate, including children's exposure. Um, they want the USDA to routinely test these products uh, fed to children and marketed to children. That's one component of Delora's bill. Well, clearly this is the kind of pushing some new issues out here and kind of ex extending this in ways that hasn't happened before. We'll have to really follow this closely. And Samara Geller, first, A, thank you for your work, and B, look forward to talking to you again as we follow Monsanto and see where this goes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thank you all so much for joining us. Take care.